two common mistakes that could ruin your chances with any man. I'm Matthew Coast, and today with me is Wendy Newman. And Wendy is an author as well as a dating, sex, and relationship expert. And she's led hundreds of workshops to thousands of people internationally. Um, and she also has a book called 121 First Dates, How to Succeed at Online Dating, Fall in Love, and Live Happily Ever After, Really. I, I love that title, by the way. Um, you may have seen her on the Wall Street Journal, Chicago Tribune, uh, Washington Post, Glamour, Self, Huffington Post, Access Hollywood, and probably a whole bunch of other places. So thanks for being with me today, Wendy. Hi, Matthew. Thank you for having me. Um, so the first thing that I wanted to talk to you about is this whole idea of nurturing yourself and um, keeping in good spiritual, uh, good spiritual shape. Can you talk to us a little bit about what that is and, and why that's important? Yeah, one of the mistakes that we make as women is we run around completely depleted. Like we try and get everything done on our work calendar and connect with friends and do everything that we're supposed to to be a good person. And then we try and date on top of that when we would really have no space left in our body, in our energy, in our time. So one of the things that I recommend for all women is to take really good care of themselves from a spiritual point of view, to do things for themselves that nurture, that tend, that take care of, even things that men would do for you if you had a man in your life, that, that's a big bang for your buck if you do something that a man would do for you. One thing is that worked really well for me is I used to buy myself flowers. And yeah, sure, a man could buy me a dozen red roses and that would be really great. But if every Friday I went to the supermarket and bought $10 worth of a dozen red roses, there's something about red roses that has me feel and has a lot of women feel like they're a gift. They, the roses actually talk. They, they bring that love, that connection, that yumminess. And so I'd buy myself flowers, but within an hour or so of having them in the vase, I would forget they were from me. <laughs> so it really does nurture and tend. Another thing I highly recommend is massage and if you have the budget to do it, whether it's, you know, the $35 foot massage or a 90 minute long body massage, I highly recommend getting one from a man because having a man tend to and nurture you during a time you don't have a man in your life is really delicious. And it's also good to have it in the safety container of a therapeutic massage. Cool. So, um, how does that translate? Like, let's t bring that over to like dating. How does that translate to, um, you know, something that you'll experience different when you're dating? Yeah. So one of the things that we sometimes hear as men and women is we have to be vibrating at our top level to attract the right person to us, to attract the very best person. We have to be at our very best all the time, which that concept is seems impossible and exhausting. If I had waited to be vibrating at my top vibration all of the time, yeah, I wouldn't have been dating about 70% of the time because life is, is busy, right? So these are ways to keep ourselves in good shape and be in that sort of higher vibration even when things get tough and rough out there. And when we don't get enough of what we need for ourselves that nourishes ourselves we're just going to show up on a date with very little to give with not enough energy to attract a man mm. yeah that that sounds um you, you know uh wh what i like about this whole concept here is is you know i, I you know I, i'm sure we've all probably been on dates where you know we've been with someone who just seems like they're they're just taking you know they're pulling their their um uh, trying to get from you, you know, and, and um, there's nothing more attractive to a guy than a woman that uh, doesn't really need him, but it's like, you know, but, but wants to have him in, a, in her life, you know, and, and um, it, it's something that I've talked about a few times and, and it's just, it's, uh, it's just so powerful. And, and when you, when you're coming from a space of like neediness, you know, like you're not taking care of yourself, you know, it, you're going to have this um, kind of 
draw to like uh, like pull from him, um, which uh, is incredibly unattractive. Uh, so um, yeah, I love it, love it. Um, yeah. So it does two things: it it pulls from men, and then it has us settle for the few crumbs that he might throw our way when we're lonely or hungry or needy. So getting those bottom line needs met and some extra plus bonus zone of like massage or something like that or flowers can really have us be chilled out, like you said, have us be present and enjoying his company instead of, are you my man? Are you gonna lock this down with me? What's happening? <laughs> yeah. Well, and, and you know, I just wanna comment on that as well because, um, you know, one of the things that tends to happen when, when I'm uh, coaching clients is that they'll come to me and they'll say, um, you know, I'll give them something that's kind of similar to this. Um, but they'll say, you know, just, I, I just want some words to say, I want, I want, you know, the exact things that I need to do. Like, give me, give me a phrase that I should be telling guys, you know, and, and this is, um, the reason that this is so much more important. And, and the reason that I think you should really listen to what we're saying right now is that this will help you out in so many different ways. Not only will it make you so much more attractive, to men, but it'll also make it so that you're not just taking any man that you can get, you know, and, and that you're only going to get into uh, some type of dating and relationship situation with a guy that does give to you because you're not coming from a space of, you know, I just need to get something. I just need to get a guy into a relationship and um, instead coming from a place of abundance, coming from a place of, of, of having a lot. Um, so uh, yeah, we've <laughs> we've been talking a lot about this. So um, th there, there's a, another thing that you were talking about before about the the whole dating buddies, like having a dating buddy. I, I've never uh, I've never heard of that before. What uh, can you can you talk more about that? Yeah, I had them by accident because I was single for a really really long time. I mean, I was the one who went on 121 different first dates. That's 121 men. <laughs> So I was dating for a long time and for lots of good reasons and, and lots of terrible reasons, lots of terrible mistake reasons that I made along the way that kept me single for as long as I was. But one of the things I noticed partway through dating was it was really hard to do alone. And especially after a really bad date, I needed somebody to just put me back together. And I don't mean that I was dramatic and threw myself on my friends for hours on end just gushing about how horrible life is and how that they should fix me. I don't mean that. I just mean a friend who, if you could have a dating buddy who is also single and in the same situation you are, that you could rely on each other, which is what I did. And I actually ended up with three of them. So I didn't burn one out. <laughs> and we just, we made a pact. We made an oath that we would be there that we would all be responsible as the ones that were going to be just giving out all that information to be healed from, right? So we were, we were going to take 20 minutes to do it. We would talk for five and then check in and see what they had to say and, and then keep going if there was more to say, but that they could help us just really release it, that we could help each other release that negativity from our system. You know, once you tell a story, once it's out of you, it can you can kind of start to think about letting it go instead of just letting it fester. And one of my dating buddies was a man, and he just happened to be a single man who we were not at all attracted to each other. We weren't each other's type, which is why it worked. And he was great because after a really terrible date where maybe a man hurt my feelings, I could go to him and tell him the story and he could tell me how amazing I am. And to hear and be healed from a man <sighs> made all the difference. To have a man say, I am so sorry, baby. That's terrible. I'm so sorry that happened to you. This had me, <sighs> okay, I can get through this. But you can't soothe yourself. You can't pat yourself on the back. You know, even though my dating buddies, all of them didn't live in my city. So they were all phone buddies to be able to be soothed like that made made the healing process quicker and made dating tolerable, had me get back out on the court faster. Now, another thing a dating buddy is really good for you is telling you straight when it's you. <laughs> I once called the debrief date number, I believe it was 77 or 78, 
I got pretty crispy at the end there. <laughs> and I was driving back, had the headset on, uh, you know, talking to him on the phone. And I just said, oh, it was horrible. And I was telling him the whole story. And he said, my love wasn't him. It's you. And I actually feel a little bit sorry for anyone you have on the books. If you have any dates coming up, you should cancel them. And you need a break because you aren't you anymore. You're crispy, crunchy, burned. If any man met you right now, he'd meet some shell of you that kind of looked like you, but not very pleasant. So might want to consider taking three weeks off. And when you do that, do something that you love. I don't care if it's baking cookies or sewing a cute skirt, but have it have a beginning, a middle, and an end. Because you need to win at something and it needs to be linear. Dating is not linear. Go. And I did. And then what he did was he held me accountable for three weeks later saying, okay, cookie, it's time to get back on the site. Let's go. So dating buddies are good to heal you. They're good to tell you when you're out there blowing it and they can tell you when it's time to take a break and they can make sure that break doesn't last eight and a half years. So, uh, yeah, you know what, what you just were talking about there. Um, <laughs> it, it sounds like we're going right back to the whole idea of self nurturing, you know, and taking care of yourself. And, and I, it, it's such a big topic and it's so important. It's something that so many people don't really do. And, um, you know, it, it can make such a big difference between, you know, being your best out there, you know, showing up and being really attractive and, and uh, having a fun time and, and actually enjoying the date that you go on, you know, and, and, you know, when you do meet that right guy, you know, a, a lot of, um, a, a lot of people I talk to, they just want to get through as many dates as they possibly can so that they can, you know, uh, find the right person and they'll just go one after the next, after the next, and they'll, you know, show up and it's like, you know, is this the right person? No. Okay, go next. Is this the right person? No. And and um, you know, and and I think that there's uh, something to that 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 is definitely incredibly valuable. Uh, but there's there's also a point where if you're not you know taking care of yourself, if you're not nurturing yourself, if you're not you know getting into the best version of yourself, um, so that when you go out and you do meet an awesome guy, that you recognize him and that. Um, you attract him to you. Uh, it, it can be really destructive to your your date, your whole dating experience. Um, so uh, let's talk about some dating mistakes here. Uh, there, there. You were mentioning before something about um, uh, a big dating mistake that a lot of women make. Something about um, you know uh, having the end in mind, starting with the end in mind. Can you talk about that? Yeah, one of the things that we do and. I blame match.com. <laughs> they ask you in the summaries, who are you? Who is he? What do you want? Right? So with that summary, we decide by, by nature, I think it's, it's kind of biology that has us create this essay for him that really doesn't talk about who we are as a person. It has us talk about who we are as a wife or a life partner. So we paint this beautiful picture of who we are, but only from the context of partnership. I, I love my family and friends. They're the most important part. I cook. I'm, I'm a great nurturer. And so we paint this whole perfect partner picture. And then under the men category, we throw in the laundry list of descriptors of every word we can think of, like our life depends on it. Like, like we could vet a man by putting, he needs to be honest and open because you know no liar would ever respond to that ad <laughs> lie about being honest and open right or we, he needs to be financially responsible or chivalrous all of the things like if we put all the right descriptors in then we're going to attract that guy and it's a mistake because what we're doing is we're leading with the end game in mind of either marriage or finding our partner which is great it might be why we're dating but there has to be baby steps along the way. You know, when he looks at your profile and he sees you de designing your life as a wife and a white picket fence for a future with him and the descriptor of who he needs to be, when he doesn't even know your real name, he only knows your handle, and he doesn't know if you're compatible in any way, are you really 
going to go to his family home in Ohio every year for Christmas. There are things that need to come long before what a good wife you are. And so we lead with that wife presentation when he doesn't even know your name, your favorite color. He doesn't know anything about you. And he certainly doesn't know if he's going to be able to get any of his needs met from you, which is one of the things a man would really take a hard look at before he'd consider being a boyfriend or a husband or in any sort of relationship. So we lead with that end game in mind, and it's kind of like showing up on a first date and saying, okay, let's talk about a prenuptial agreement. Let's start with the end, mind, end game in mind, right? No, that would be weird. And we do that, and it seems weird to men, and it seems, and I'd love to hear what you have to say about this, Matthew, but it seems like we're putting the cart before the horse. And then we run around the planet saying that all men are just out for fun, and that women are serious. We're seriously looking for our person, but men, they're just out there for fun. Well, maybe men have it right. Maybe men marry or men partner with women who they think are fun or smart or whatever a man's flavor is, right? But that there are baby steps that need to be taken and that baby step is a first live date out at a restaurant or a cafe or a park where you can actually get to know each other starting with your actual names. And then you can get to what a great partner you will be, but that comes much later. That doesn't come in the, in the first date. What do you think about that? So um, what, uh, I think it's really interesting. Um, uh, so what, what do you think is a, um, and I'll, I'll kind of expand a little bit on, on, <laughs> on what I think about this in a minute, but what do you think is a better kind of uh, approach to, um, you know, if you're if you're going on and and you're going and you want to meet, get married to, what what do you think is a better approach um, for that? Do you think it's just to you know, um, you know, because it's one of those things. She also doesn't want to end up wasting a lot of her time, right? right. Um, so so what is what is she supposed to do in this situation? Well, you can use the pull downs, and you can certainly say, "I'm on the site to look for my partner," or "I'm on the site to look for my husband." but let me tell you who I am. And then you can just talk about who you are. Again, not from the wife filter, but from what's interesting to you. What, who are you? What are you about? Who's your favorite underdog? Why? What do you get behind? What are you passionate about? What matters to you? What's your life like? Instead of what a great wife I will be. Hmm. Um, yeah, I think there's, uh, there's definitely, it's funny because I've had this conversation, uh, you know, not a, exactly this conversation, but I've had a very similar conversation for, I, I don't know how many, um, <laughs> last couple of months with lots of friends, with lots of clients, with lots of people, um, just about this whole idea of, of what men mo really want, you know, and, and, um, the fact that men are very serious, like very, very serious. When I go to, uh, when, when I, I talk to lots of guys about what it is that they want. And I've probably asked, I don't know, uh, hundreds of men, about what it is that they want and, and a lot of times what I'll get is you know when when I when I go and meet a guy e even if it's a you know brother friend uh, you know somebody I meet on the street and I start talking to him about dating um, most men that I talk to sometimes you get the guy that's like super serious and he's like hey I'm finding a wife right now you know um, but a lot of the guys that I talk to they tell me that um, you know, they're dating, they're just going out there and dating and they want to meet some girls and, you know, have some fun and all that kind of stuff. And, and usually at some point I'll, I'll, I'll like look them in the eye and I'll be like, yeah, but you know, uh, don't you want to find like, you know, somebody to settle down with? Like if you found somebody that was really awesome, like, wouldn't you want to like, you know, get married to her or something? And, and I almost, almost every single time I always get the same answer. Guys are like, well, Yeah. Uh, you know, of course, I'd love to, you know, get married and, you know, commit to a woman and find the one and, you know, and, and you know, get married again, maybe, or, or you know, whatever their situation is, you know, and, and usually what I'll hear from them is they'll say, but I just don't think she's out there, you know, and, and um, I think it's really important to, uh, to, to think about that, you know, like most guys that I talk to, they want to, find a committed relationship and when they meet a woman um if he doesn't feel 
like she's the type of woman that he could be with in a long term. Like if he doesn't look at her and he sees her as somebody that he um, could stay with for a long time, uh, a lot of times he'll just tell her that he's just looking for something casual. Yeah. And um, that that's really what the big thing is. And when you come to dating with this whole mindset of, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, looking for my husband, I'm looking for the one and, you know, do you fit into this description, you know, and, and you're like drilling these guys down, you know, trying to find out if they're the one or not. Um, not only do you not enjoy yourself <laughs> nearly as much and are much less likely to find a great guy, but uh, guys are so like, they look at you and if you're an attractive woman to him, he might look at you and think, oh, she would be a lot of fun to, you know, casually date. But um, I just, there's no way that I could be in a relationship with someone like this, you know, and, and that's, uh, that's what happens a lot of the times with, with guys when they, when they kind of, it, it's almost like this feeling that they have. And, and it's, it's like, you're putting up this, um, uh, this, you know, checklist of, of what, you know, and, you know, do you fit into all these things? And the guy looks at it and he goes, no, not really. You know, like how, how does anybody ever fit into all that stuff? You know, half the women, um, uh, that I work with that, uh, th they'll bring me their, like their list of like what they want in a guy. And it's like a, you know, a hundred, hundred, uh, you know, list sheet of, you know, like all these different qualities and, and, and I'll turn it back and I'm like, well, how many of those, you know, do you have, you know, and, and you know, if, if a guy came to you with a list like that, you know, how would that make you feel? And, and it's usually like, you know, one, um, you know, you may have many of those things, but at the same time, it's like, you know, connect with a guy, you know, it's, it's the, the big thing about online dating. And, and this is just a pet peeve. And I, I have to talk about this right now. <laughs> Sorry. Um, th there's this thing about like dating a six foot tall guy. Right. <laughs> and like every woman, yeah, every, every woman from five foot two to, you know, five foot 10 is looking for the six foot tall guy. Right. And like, you know, I'm, I'm guessing that there's these six foot tall guys on the internet somewhere that are just having a wild ride, you know, but most of the guys fall under, you know, like I think the average is somewhere between like 5'10 and like 5'8 or something like that. And, and, you know, there's a huge range of these really awesome guys who are, who are that tall, you know, and, and you're like, and even shorter and taller, you know, I mean, there's awesome guys everywhere, but you know, there's all these guys that are like getting passed over that, that could be just amazing fits for you, you know, but your criteria is that he's six foot tall and you're five foot three and you're like, you know, and it just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense at all, you know, and, and I, I just had to, <laughs> I just had to talk about that. Yeah, 14%, there are 14% of American men who are over six feet tall. Yeah, I didn't know that, but I'm not. I'm not surprised at all. That's um, and, and how many of them are are online dating right now? Um, so uh, there's this. Uh, let's talk a little bit more about online dating. Um, there, there's uh, you know, arguably one of the most important things in a in a a woman's profile, right? Is is going to be her pictures, right? A, a guy's probably going to go through, and and I'm guessing on most dating sites, especially you know uh, apps like Tinder and Bumble and stuff like that. I'm I'm you know guys are just looking at photos, right? Um, what are some of the big photos, uh, at least initially? What are some of the big uh, photo mistakes that uh, women make? Well, a couple of them are one mistake is women often put themselves in photographs with their girlfriends like a, either a night out on the town or just her and her, her gal pal or whatever. And one man told me, these women, they have got to get uglier friends every time. <laughs> it's so distracting. I'm trying to see her. I'm trying to date her. And then I'm confused. I can't figure out which one is her. And her friends are usually cuter. And it's, I want the other one's number. Just let me focus. Just have me focus on you. So I don't recommend photos with other people. Don't put photos with other girlfriends. Don't put photos with men. I had a client who I adore who had this gorgeous picture of herself sitting behind a big wheel of a sailboat. And behind her, no, sorry, a man was sitting at the wheel of the sailboat. 
and she was standing behind the man with her arms around and bear hug style around his neck. And they looked like husband and wife. And I said, what are you doing with this picture on your profile? She said, well, it's my brother. How do you know that? <laughs> no, but he doesn't know your brother or your cousin. Another girlfriend put herself with a man in a picture and I called her on it and she said, oh, well, he's not my type. No man would think I would be with that man. What? <laughs> no, keep it simple. Just you, happy, just casual, just you. And the other thing, the other number one dating mistake with the photos that I made personally is not having a full body shot. And you can tell I'm a big girl, but it, this applies to thin women, big women, medium women, all women. So men are visual and you want them to weed you in or out before they get in front of you. And if you have the wrong shot on, which is misleading, it's just not gonna be pretty. In the very beginning of online dating, I never meant to lie. I didn't mean to confuse anybody. I used current photographs, but in my little pea brain mind, I decided to use the best full body shot of me possible. And it was a full body shot, but it wasn't a full body shot, it was an art shot. And I didn't know the difference between an art shot and a full body shot then. So what I had done is I had strategically sat myself on stairs and I had these really great tights on, these pattern tights and high heels. And if you sit me just right on stairs and you take the camera up Kardashian style, right? <laughs> And then if I push one leg to one side and I fold and I bend a little bit, what you see is great cleavage, beautiful long legs, and I've hidden my biggest part, which is my belly area. So it was a full body shot, but it wasn't true. If I stood up, you'd go, oh, oh, oh okay, okay, I got it now, right? <laughs> so, but I didn't think I was trying to hide it. I didn't think I was trying to trick anybody. I just thought, this is the best shot of me there is. Don't put the best shot of you there is. Put the best shot of you that truly shows your shape. If you don't like your butt, don't try and shove half of it in the chair to cut it off in the photo, because it will bite you in the ass. <laughs> I, I went on date number nine. I remember date number nine. I went on date number nine, and it was, oh, it was dinner. <laughs> and I walked up. And we met in front of the restaurant at the exact same time. And we walked up and he did that, he did that. <laughs> and I should have just, I should have just said in that moment, oh God, so sorry. I, I can see I'm not your type. We're not gonna have dinner together. I, I have a good Saturday, right? But no, 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 no. He opened the door. And I walked through it and it was three hours of my life that I will never get back. It was horrible. <laughs> mm. So, and my own fault, totally my fault. Well, and, and, you know, uh, just kind of from a guy's perspective I, and uh, something that you probably don't know about me, Wendy, but um, I used to actually be a men's dating coach uh, way before I was a women's dating coach. And one of the things that um, I, heard complaints from guys all the time was j exactly what you're talking about you know and, the, and guys would be like so how do i get her to send me a full body shot so that i know what i'm getting into before i you know and and um you know it, it you might be insecure about your um about your size or you know how you look and you know i i've it, it's it's interesting i coached a, a woman who was uh really really thin like really thin and uh she was really um insecure about that too which is it, it's it, it doesn't matter how big or small you are just about everybody's insecure about what's going on with them um but a, a guy has to you know if, if a guy's not if that attraction isn't there you know and, and he looks at your photo um and you know, he, sh you sh he shows up and you're something completely different than in the photo. They, they say that, um, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of women in their online photos, they, they like try to lie about their size and they try to lie about their, uh, uh, sometimes about their age too. Um, and guys typically <laughs> lie about their height. Um, if, uh, you know, a guy meets you and 
you know, he sees that you're something completely different than what he saw in the photos or, you know, he feels like you were hiding something and um, it, it's just, it's not, gonna, that, that's not a good start. <laughs> you know, like, that's a really, really bad start is, is trying to um, lie to a guy. Uh, about what's going on and, and hoping that, you know, he'll meet you and be like, oh, you know, she's not my type, but I'm so into her, you know, which is possible. Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know what, I've, I've seen, I've seen it happen before, um, but it wasn't from online dating. Um, you know, I, I know guys that have gone for girls that weren't their type. Um, but it, it wasn't from online dating and it wasn't from, you know, a woman hiding who she was. It was from being confident in, you know, what's going on with her and, you know, um, connecting with a man in, in, you know, more ways than just that. Um, but, but I, I would suggest that you definitely do not, uh, try to hide or, uh, um, lie about a anything that's going on with you. Cause it's just... It, it's just it it just leads down to a horrible road where a guy's like, uh, you know, what situation am I in right now? And next thing you know, he's disappearing, and uh, we know how much women hate when guys disappear. So, um, don't do it. Yeah, um, you're right. I mean, don't don't lie. Don't lie to him. Don't lie to yourself, thinking that this is really you. If you're not sure, check with your girlfriend. Does this look like me today? And I recommend no pictures older than six months old because you might have that really great photo view from five years ago that you think looks exactly like you today. It doesn't. So I, I recommend not doing that. And women get really upset with men about being so shallow about the way we look. But this is biology, ladies. This isn't something that most men can change. Like you said, Matthew, you, you know a handful of people, a few people who went ahead and made a successful relationship with someone not their type. But I'd like for women to consider how would you like to go the rest of your life with someone who didn't look at you and just see you as absolutely beautiful and sexy and vibrant. It's another reason why it took me so long as I just was unwilling to partner with someone who didn't love me exactly how I looked right now, not what I was going to be next summer. Yeah. Well, and, and, you know, just to your point too, I, I know people that have gotten into those relationships and, and, you know, guys that were like, Hey, you know what, I'm just going to, I'm going to go for it, even though she's not my type, you know, that ended up getting married and then ended up getting divorced. And, you know, the guy was like, you know, I, I knew from the beginning that it wasn't right, but I kind of got sucked up into it. Yeah, um, heartbreaking for men because there are women who are, phenomenal and they wish they could get that attraction but for most men it doesn't a man we don't grow on men the way that women can sometimes have a man grow on us i mean we literally can get a hundred percent there from thinking he was a i hate the numbers but let's just say thinking he was a three or four to four months later after working with him seeing his integrity and his backbone and his status he just met went all the way to a 10 he's hot now and that doesn't usually happen so much for men, which is a bummer for men because there are women that they wish they could be with, but it's just not there for them. Mm. Absolutely. Um, so let's talk about uh, this whole newly divorced men type of thing. Um, are, are newly divorced guys uh, guys that uh, you'd want to stay away from? No. Y you, you don't want to go running towards them either. <laughs> you want to step forward very cautiously. And determine which one you have on your hands because there's actually two different kinds. And we see a lot and we experience a lot when we date the not great newly divorced man who is rebounding and looking for fun and looking for healing. And you want to think of it like this. A newly divorced guy who is not in great shape will find a really great woman and he'll become very attracted to her. And you want to think about it like he was in a deep, dark, cavernous cave of a hole. And then you came along. You know, maybe his life was sad and morose and depressing, but you gave him hope. You gave him a glimmer of light. And, and all of a sudden, he had the space to come out of, of that cave. He comes out of that cave and he hits the earth and 
grass and he looks around and he sees the shiny ball happen and the bright sun and the birds chirping. <gasps> and he's in great shape and he takes off. You, you, my love, were the ladder going down into the hole and they never think to take the ladder with them. <laughs> so oftentimes it is that rebound. We're in that moment to pull him out of the yuck and the pain of the divorce and then he's going to be gone. And one of the ways you can know that that man is the one you're dating is because he doesn't have anything to give you. He can't make any commitments. He doesn't have anything to give you. And you can feel it. I want the first date after my, I was married for 12 years. And so when I talk about 121 first dates, that started at the age of 35 after a long-term marriage ended. And the first man I dated, we were both fresh out of a divorce. And we dated for over a year. And, and I, we both were in love with each other. I am friends with him to this day, all these years later. But he didn't have anything to give. Oh, and I knew it. He didn't have anything to give, and I knew it. I knew it. I could tell from the beginning. Or they'll just rebound, and they'll be gone. Or they'll do the disappearing thing, and then you'll be left wondering, what did you do wrong? And you didn't do anything wrong. You, he was just showing you where he is at this stage of life. But there are some men who come out of a divorce and can not rebound, that can get into a relationship within a matter of a year or months or even weeks. Uh, I, know, I know a woman who was with now her husband of five years. They, they met five weeks after he had come out of a really shocking divorce, just shocking. She, he did not see it coming. The divorce and for me I am in a relationship with Dave and he was about five weeks out of his divorce but how he talks about it is he had been mourning the ending of that marriage for about 10 years so oftentimes if they can see it coming you know what's really common in our culture is couples stay together till the kids go off to college and then they divorce so if they've been watching the end of their marriage and partnering together as friends to get through that last seven years, when he becomes available, he processed that ending of that divorce pretty much through the last seven years of his marriage. It's not that he's clean, fresh, and ready to go, but he's going to be in a lot better shape than someone that had a rug pull surprise. But again, it's not always a circumstance. I had my best friend married somebody who... He had a shocking surprise and he was ready for her within weeks. So just depends on the guy and how you want to find out which one you have is to watch how he's participating with you. Does he have anything to give in terms of his time, his energy? Is he the one planning dates and getting in touch with you and making things happen? So you just want to watch his actions. Is he, is his actions following his words and is he wooing you? Is he planning date after date after date. Um, so let's talk uh, um, about your 121 dates that you went on. Um, what what'd you get out of that? Oh, well, I got my partner. <laughs> Yay. Um, I learned a couple of things. One of the things that I learned was, like you talked about earlier, we have these big long lists. And I had some things on my big long list that actually conflicted with each other. And a lot of women have things on their list that one item will cancel out a different item. So it's one of the reasons it took me so long is, yeah, I had conflicting things on my list and hardly anybody could match that list and he did. So it took 121, but I got to him. And the number one thing that I learned throughout all of those men that I dated was that I could actually date a man who wasn't my type. Like we were talking earlier, I could date someone, give him a chance to grow on me. I could date someone out of my type and from time to time could actually have a great relationship with him. But one thing that I could never do is I couldn't date a man and have it work if he was outside of my tribe. And what I mean by tribe is we have resonance, we have similarities. I don't mean we're the same race. I don't mean that we have the same background. I don't mean that. But that we have a very similar point of view. And in our culture, we talk about how opposites attract. It's true, they do, for hot chemistry and making strong babies. But 
for quality of life? Mm, not so much. Imagine opposites attract. Date someone that is the opposite of your presidential candidate. No. <laughs> dating, dating your tribe makes life so much easier because you have resonance and you can have the same point of view about world issues. They can easily see where you're coming from and you can be seen and understood for the person you are as you can see them for the person that they are. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to line up neatly, but there has to be enough there, enough commonalities where it's easy. You want something easy because if you're going to live with them for the rest of your life, you're going to spend a ridiculous amount of time together. So <laughs> you might as well pick somebody that you get along with instead of that's really hot. So how do you determine what, you know, who's in your tribe and, and whether it's like too much or whether it's the right amount? Like, how, how do you know? Well, you can know if you're working really hard on a date to be understood that perhaps they're not in your tribe. And one mistake that I made a lot and that women often make is if he's really attractive or if he has a lot of status, we're going to make this work come hell or high water. So if you notice yourself contorting and becoming somebody who you're not to see if it'll fit with this guy, that's not us being having low self-esteem. That's instinct trying to lock this one down. Not good. Not, not a good sign. That is a red flag to yourself that he might not be in your tribe and you might be making him way more amazing than he really is. And the opportunity of losing this potential relationship way more intense than it is because it's not real. Yeah. You know, what I'm okay. about, right. You've had that experience, right? Where you're yeah. like, I don't think you are who you are presenting yourself to be right now. <laughs> I simply asked you, a question and you're being really weird right now. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there's definitely, there's a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of pressure, man. Yeah. You know, um, uh, <laughs> just, this is kind of a side note, but, uh, a, a lot of guys out there feel, um, uh, feel like they need to be, um, somebody different than who they are in order to attract a woman to them. You know, and, and, and I'm not saying that it's, you know, women's fault that they're like that. Um, and I'm not saying that it's, you know, their fault either. I think that there's just a lot of kind of expectations and a lot of uh, 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 judgments that, that men kind of go through. And so a, a lot of times they'll, they'll fake things, you know, and they'll pretend that they're um, somebody that they're not. And, and um, you know, uh, one, one of the best ways to kind of get through that, um, in my opinion, is to, um, you know, be impressed by the things that he says, but also show him that you're more interested in who he is and that you're, you're not, you know, so interested in, you know, the built up image that he's trying to project of himself to you. Um, because if it gets really big, um, he might have this kind of image that he's showing you and that you've fallen in love with and that he can't really um, uh, maintain or, or it's not actually who he is. And, and um, you know, one, one, <laughs> there's this kind of this weird thing that a lot of women don't really get and it's that guys are, are really insecure. Um, we, we have lots of insecurities about um, who we are and whether we're good enough for the women that we're trying to date. And if a guy feels like he, this image that he's put out there is a lot, um, is a lot bigger than he is, um, he might end up disappearing on you because he doesn't want you to find out the truth about him. And uh, it happens all the time, all the time with guys. Um, you know, they'll, they'll, there's, <laughs> there's actually a culture around it believe it or not, um, where guys will, you know, like, <laughs> you know, buy all these fancy things to, to impress women or even rent really fancy things to impress women. Um, and then women, <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's just not who they are, you know? And, and so, um, yeah, connect with, connect with him, connect with who he is. Uh, so, so the last question here that I, that I have is this, um, is about, 
uh, should a should a woman wait, right? Um, should a should a woman wait um, to start dating? What do you think? Absolutely not. When you know the things that we think we should do is wait until the right time comes when you're less busy. Uh, do you have times in your life that you're less busy, Matthew? I, I don't know. I'm never less busy. And and we have we tell these stories to ourselves like, well, you know, my aunt really needs me right now, and I gotta help my family, or I need to wait until the kids are in a certain spot in school, or I need to wait till I'm finished with my college courses or the work project, or even worse, that I'm not going to date until I've lost the weight, you know, until I get to that perfect fighting, competitive dating weight where I can get the right man, because the right man would never love me at the weight I am now. No, no, no. And by the way, for anyone waiting to date because you want to lose the weight, it's a terrible strategy. Because what will happen is you might lose weight, weight, but you might not, and then you might not ever date. But I have faith in you. you. You'll lose the weight, and you'll get really close to that goal weight, and that's when you'll go online because you just have like five more pounds to go. And then, then you meet him, and you hope that he likes you even though you're five pounds too heavy, but maybe he can't see that right now, and you can trick him until you lose that extra five pounds, and then it will all turn out. And then what happens is you start courting. Do you know what happens when you start courting? Midnight milkshakes. That's what happens. I know in the first year of being with Dave, I gained 30 pounds. <laughs> they woo you. They wine and dine you. You have midnight milkshakes. That five pounds doesn't come off. And then your inner critic is freaking out that you now are like, you've got 10 pounds to go now, and now it's terrible, and this crazy cycle happens. No. Date now as you are, represent yourself as who you are right now, and then just take a deep breath and know that if he's with you, yeah, he's into you right now as you are. And if you lose some or gain some, it's all fine. It's you have a little wiggle room if you haven't hit that perfect ideal goal weight yet. But life doesn't get easier. It doesn't get simpler. It doesn't get less busy. It's not like nothing new is going to come up to take the space. So it's just an excuse. Yeah, absolutely, and and I totally agree with you. And yeah, you know, it's funny. I I meet a um like the women that I talk to about you know like how many men are they meeting you know typically and and um you know usually uh if I if I took like all the women that I've talked to about how many men that they meet on a weekly basis and I like condense them together into an average, the average amount of men that most women meet um, is less than one. <laughs> and a week, new men, you know, and, and, um, you know, the, the rate at which you're going to meet <laughs> the right guy at the, I mean, it's possible. Maybe he'll, you know, show up at your door and, uh, deliver your pizza or something, but, um, most likely you're not going to meet him that way. And so, uh, you know, <laughs> I, I totally agree. Get out there, you know, get uh, online, online dating's great. I love it. Um, I think it's, I think it's amazing. I mean, there's a lot of like superficial aspects and there's a lot of uh, things that dating sites are doing that make it more difficult actually to meet a great person than they are, you know, um, making it so that it's easier. But, you know, with that said, uh, you know, go meet some guys. Um, so, so you have a teleclass that's coming up. Uh, can, can you talk a little bit about, um, you know, why uh, someone would want to be a part of that and what they'd kind of get out of that? Absolutely. It's called Dating by Design, and it's an eight-week teleclass. And every week for 75 minutes, I give you the best of what I've got that I learned in over 10 years of dating. The mistakes, the wins, everything I've gotten from coaching clients because I see that there were mistakes that I made that are super common that almost all women make. Like I said, I could start to see the repeating patterns in my clients and I could help. And there were also things I did all the way up to the very end that if I had known from the beginning would have made my life so much better. And I probably wouldn't have had to go through 121 with all that trial and error. So not only do I help fast speed up the process of finding someone, I give women grace. And one of the things that is confronting for women is having to not be disappointing to men, having to be displeasing to a man. And I give really clear one-liners for women to use on how to, how to say no, how to end a date, how to decline in advance. 
how to handle particular situations that drive us off dating sites altogether. Awesome. That sounds amazing. So if you're interested in, in uh, you know, making sure that you don't make all the, all the mistakes that uh, everyone else is making out there and, and you want some really practical ways to, uh, to make sure that you, you find the right guy for you, um, th there should be a link below this video right here down down that way um, just go down there and take a look at at what she's got and if you're interested in it you know I, I definitely suggest that you sign up for it and um, if, you do, if you do put Matthew in the code and because Matthew and I talked about it I'm gonna give you a special deal now because you could see how important a dating buddy is I want you to have a dating buddy so if you sign up and put Matthew in the code because you're connected to Matthew you can bring a girlfriend for free Awesome. That's that's a great deal. <laughs> um, cool. So thank you so much for being with us today, Wendy. Um, you, you definitely have some really great insights. Thank you. All right. And I'll talk to everybody later.